looks like we got a weak starter switch and uh, I've soldered that together the, the safety switch temporarily this starter switch also seems very weak I'm probably just gonna pull this apart clean these terminals behind it but I think we got to clean the carbs as well unfortunately because it only runs for a sec then it dies so all right so here's what we're gonna try to do I've taken the air box off I did have one vacuum line running to the back of this carb as you can see right there I have one fuel line right down there that I have to disconnect that's what goes in and then I have one clamp to take off and this should come off of there now I notice I have enough slack between all this wiring and stuff and my hope is that once I get this out I should be able to prop it up enough that I can turn it sideways and pull the bottom of the carb off and clean it without having to remove the entire system same thing with up here so once this one's out I'm gonna pull this one out as well this one's a lot easier to access as you can see it's much easier to access so I'm gonna pull this out and we're gonna do a basic cleaning on this and then put it back together and see what happens I can uh, looking inside here I can see that there's definitely some old fuel and it smells like uh, you know varnish but I did notice the vacuum was really stuck and now that I'm doing this you can hear it the vacuum has unstuck so what I'm gonna do is pull the top off of the uh, carb and uh, pull the whole vacuum system out we're gonna clean all that to make sure the vacuum slide can go up and down properly so while I have it in there still I'm gonna go ahead and do the vacuum portion of this first there should be a spring underneath here with a big vacuum and then a needle that goes down the center so let me pull this off first once we get this off we're gonna clean the, the slide and then we'll do the rest of it from there all right I also want to get down into the float and see how much fuel this is taking on so while I have access to this one and it's still connected and I can pry on these screws a little bit, right? We're gonna go ahead and put a Phillips head screwdriver on there and we're gonna take these off if possible. All right, looks like we got them all off. Cool, so let me remove this. We're gonna pull the slide out first. We'll go ahead and clean the slide while it's in here because ideally guys, the less you mess with the carb system, the better off you're going to be. If you can clean these while they're still in the bike, just by removing them and tipping them sideways, I would suggest doing that because I promise you will make way more problems for yourself by removing the entire assembly and doing it. If you can get away with the bare minimum and make the bike run good, that's what I would suggest doing. If you can even get the bike to run at all and take any kind of throttle after this, then get carb cleaner and put it in there and run it through the system. It will free itself up. It'll get all that, you know, junk out of there and that's what we want to do it's the same thing that i did with the kawasaki make less work for yourself not more work for yourself so let's start with the simple stuff knock that out and then we'll go from there let me pull this off we'll have a look inside see what it looks like all right so as you guys can see i've got the vacuum diaphragm here and uh, it still looks okay everything still feels good all the rubber still feels good it looks like it has a good solid seal and uh, the spring is down there and now the top the four screws so let's see if we can pull this out gently I don't want to rip anything let's see if we can get this slide out of here carefully is it gonna let me pull it come on out there we go there we go come on out of there one more there we go that should just pop on out now carefully Let's have a look oh yeah this slide needs to be cleaned it is all gunked up with stuff you can see that let's have a look inside there oh boy okay all right and it is very dirty as you can see so let's go ahead and spray this off while we have this out give this a good cleaning let me go get some paper towels for now i'm just going to set that just like that let me go get some paper towels and a rag and clean this this is exactly uh you know what though i'm not mad because this is still in really good shape so I'm happy about that. I hope that one's in just as good a shape. This is something you can say about Makuni, man. You got to give it up to the Japanese. They make really good products. 30 years, and this does not look like it's had a rebuild kit. Everything looks clean, but you can see all the green stuff on the end of the silver. That's all ethanol buildup. So that would tell me. I can see it all over inside here, all that ethanol buildup. So this definitely needs to be cleaned, both of these. So let's go ahead and get my carb cleaner out, put it on the bench, and uh, let's clean this one. 
We'll make our way through. We'll try to do this all together. Like I said, objectively, we don't want to remove the entire carb system from the bike. Just move it so that we can clean the majority of everything and then just put it right back together and see what happens from there, okay? All right. Wow. This thing is just trash. I don't want to spray towards my phone, but... Vacuum slide. All right, let's go clean off. Let's go spray the inside of the car real fast. All right, see all those particles in there? Yep, all that. Look at all that yellow in there. See all that? That's all yellow inside there. This needs to be cleaned so bad. It's not even funny. Oh my gosh. Look at all that come out of there. Are you kidding me? You just see all the yellow in there. It needed that so bad. Remember to try to spray every orifice that you can. There we go. All these little holes go places. Try to pressurize them if you can. All right, let's wipe that down now. Let's wipe her down. Get any of those particles out of there that we can. Get this as clean as we can before we slap the lid back on it and send it. There we go. There we go. All right. Get all that in there. Okay. Now I can do everything else on the bottom. Look at how different that looks. Everything looks all shiny now. All right, so remember, it seats right there with that little, that lets you know that you're in the in the line and make sure everything's good and seated before you continue. So we cleaned all that. That's all good and seated now. Everything's good. So now we're gonna drop the spring back in there. And then the fun part is getting this tucked so the spring is straight. That takes a little bit of work. So when you put the lid on, you gotta make sure that the spring is straight up and down. That takes a little bit of work. So let me set my phone down here, get this done. And then next up, we got to disconnect that gas line down there, and then we'll see if we can free the carb up to tilt it sideways to clean the bottom of it and shoot through it instead of spraying into the intake. So next thing you got to do now is remove this from the petcock because the screw that you need to get to to release the carb from the intake is back there. Let's see if I can point that out with a screwdriver so you guys can see. So it's that one right there. That's the screw that you have to undo. Unfortunately, it's a little hard with the pet cock in the way. Now I can try, I suppose I can get it, but if it puts up too much of a fight, go ahead and remove the pet cock. It's kind of a bad angle, so when I go to put it back on, I'll probably take the pet cock off anyways, but that's how you're gonna remove it from the intake boot and back it off just enough that we can pull the carb comfortably. Looks like that's about all I need to go right there. So it's gonna be Silly and we have to go to put that back on that's gonna be rough to get back on there But there you go so you can see it back there. So now I have to disconnect a fuel line, which is this one You guys can see this here right there that is the Bottom fuel line and that has to come off. So right now I'm just gonna give a little push and see if we can just kind of drag it off gently Without the point of a screwdriver, I just want to use a round part of the screwdriver if possible. See if we can just slowly pop that off. Hope that doesn't like disappear into the recesses of the bike. There we go. Looks like I got it off. Ooh, she's a leaker. Yeah, a bunch of bunch of crappy gas just rolled out of there. Mmm, my screwdriver smells amazing. Let me tell you. All right, so. This will also give me an opportunity to test the fuel pump now that I have that off. I'm going to give some power to the bike, turn it over, and see if that shoots anything out of it. kind of hope it does. But first, let's go ahead and see if we can pull the carb off now. I think we're just going to grab it, give a few pulls, and see if we can loosen it out of there. See if it pops. I should be able to take it off now without too much effort. It's just going to 
It's been on there for a long time, so I might have to use two hands. So let me let me grab two hands, see if we can get it off there without breaking anything, okay? All right, so I disconnected the one fuel line that feeds the other carb up here, and that allowed me to pull this out comfortably, and the uh, clamp stayed down there on the intake boot, if you can see that, so that worked out perfect. So I was able to pick this up. Now remember, our objective is not to put too much tension on anything, right guys? We're not, we're not trying to put too much tension on any of this stuff. The throttle cables, nothing. All this is locked into place. Here's your synchronizing. I believe this is your sync cable, I think. Oh, it might be this one. One of these is the sync cable and we just need to be very careful. Okay, so while we're messing with all this, we want to try to keep everything right where it's at. I'm going to spray all this with WD-40 and uh, lubricate things. But now I have complete access to the bottom of the carb right here. As you guys can see, I can pull this carburetor off now, the bottom of it, and clean everything where it sits instead of removing the entire carb from the system. See, so objectively, this is what we want to try to do. We're going to do the same thing when we get up here, okay? So... Let's go ahead and pull the bottom of this carb off, have a look at what's going on inside the float. We know that we just cleaned all this, but you can see that there's just garbage around here, around this ring, all this, all this needs to be cleaned up. We need to spray these holes and orifices and get some pressure going through them. So that's what we're gonna do, okay? So let's try to give this carb a good cleaning if possible. Good old McCoonie, man. They do jet skis, they do everything, don't they? <laughs> Busy company. All right, well, let's pull this apart. Oh, dude. Wow. Oh, my God. Look inside there. Holy mackerel. Oh, and this is sticking. This isn't even... Okay. <whistles> Holy crap. <laughs> well, this thing was never going to start run good, even though that's fresh gas that made it in there it's not enough to make this bike run by any means holy crap well i can say it doesn't need a rebuild kit but oh my this thing is in dire need of a cleaning so you know what comes next we're gonna take all this apart and uh, main jet low pilot we're gonna blast all these lines out of here and uh holy shit we're gonna have to take the needle out and spray all that i'm gonna have to open this up with my hand like so when i spray it and um, i did cover the intake to make sure nothing can get in there but holy mackerel wow this is gnarly yeah this is pretty bad <laughs> oh my god this is pretty bad okay well get a piece of cardboard because we're going to do a lot of spraying here okay all right so as you can see i've pretty much cleaned a lot of the inside here i got a little bit more yellow to go i've cleaned all the insides out uh there you go you guys can see in there now and uh clean the needle cleaned all that like i said i got a little bit more to go i gotta give this a good wipe down wipe down still I gotta spray it one more time get a lot more of the yellow out sprayed all the lines so all the holes are freed up now started to spray back here but as you can see this needs a good rub down inside here too before I put all that back together and um, yeah so not not a huge deal we're doing all right so far but uh, I will say I'm gonna show this to you guys here that somebody already tried to clean these a while ago because this one is really marred up. Look at that. I had to take a hammer and put my flathead in there and make a whole new line because somebody had ripped it all up. So I had to beat a new hole in there, which is fine. It won't affect anything, you know, as long as the hole on this side is intact. So I sprayed this, got cleaned all the way through it, so this is good now. So now we're going to give everything a good spray. So that's the pilot. That's the main and uh, I can see through both of them, so now we're just going to give everything a really good cleaning because this is garbage. There's the uh, float needle. That all needs to be cleaned off. So let's, uh, let's get started here. Look at this. This is crazy. So let's clean. I'll show you what these parts look like when they're cleaned. And as always, gum out. Favorite choice. Okay, there you go. Float bowl. 
needle, main, pilot, float. Everything is cleaned. Let's put her back together. All right, got her back in there now. All that seems to be good. All the lines seem to have gone back to where they should. That's a plus. That's all fitted back in there now. The cables all seem to be good. Doesn't look like I screwed anything up here. So we should be good to go there. Might actually, no, I'll leave that cable. I actually like where that sits right now. That's a good spot for it. So, anyways, um, now I'm gonna check that fuel line because remember we disconnected that fuel line down there. If you guys can see it, it's that little brass piece down there. You see the two fuel lines, one on the bottom, one on the top. That fuel line that I didn't hook up down there, um, I actually have this connected to a quick start battery over there and I got the keys on. I actually want to see if the, um, I hope the bike doesn't fire up, but if it does, whatever. <laughs> whatever. I'll uh, reconnect this fuel line just in case it does. But uh, it'll just sputter out real fast in that event. It will just crap out real quick. And I definitely want to spray these lines too. You know, what? I should probably spray these before I continue. Oh yeah, this is really gooey. Okay, that's gross. We're not going to let that run in there. I'm going to disconnect that top line too. We need to get all that junk and gunk out of those lines. Damn it. Oh, it smells wonderful. Mm hmm. Well, now you know why this bike was running so pissy because nobody's ever cleaned anything. But anyways, uh, while it's disconnected right now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the bike over. I want to see if any fuel or noise spits out of that hole right there. And I, want, I don't understand what they got going on here. It says on here, but it says off here. I'm not sure what they got going on with the petcock. I, this is why I want to kind of test this and see what's going on here. I'm actually going to pull the petcock, disconnect it, and see which one actually is on and which one's off so I don't have to keep playing this guessing game as to what they've done here. So let me turn the bike over. I'm going to turn this off. Uh, this is all cleaned and put back on. So obviously next we're going to do this one. That one looks like it's more of a pain in the ass than that one is. But what ifs? <laughs> Whatever. I can see the clamp that goes on it right back there. So we'll be taking it off the intake boot down there. That should just disconnect and then pull up. And I should have, uh, hopefully once I remove this, I'll have access to the bottom of it so I can work on it. And uh, all these lines should be able to pull forward now that I've got this reseated again. So I should be able to clean both of them without actually removing everything from the bike. That was the whole idea, was not disconnecting all the cables and screwing everything up. They just needed to be cleaned and then put back in. So that's, that's where we're at. So now let's check the petcock and see if the fuel pump works properly. And there you go. She's all put back together. Fuel lines back on down there. Talk about a pain in the ass. All the vacuum lines have been rehooked up. All these wires have been redone. I did take this uh, fuel line off and blast it because it was very sticky with ethanol gunk on the inside. Cleaned all that. Cleaned that line down there, down to here. And so pretty much I'm kind of hoping that this thing runs everything through without having too many issues. You know, that would be that would be a big major plus and uh, everything else seems to be looking okay so I'm not really stressing any of this stuff so now we're gonna put that last screw in back down there to hold the carb in place now that I've mounted this that all the fuel lines are back on and then we can start on now that I've got this mumbo jumbo of wires down here back to normal <laughs> this spider web of wires that they decide to throw underneath the seat these are the only two that really need to be sticking out at that point Rerouting everything and mapping it correctly is pretty difficult, honestly. You got to really be paying attention to where everything goes. Otherwise, man, when you go to put this back together, you'll be starting all over from scratch. You don't want to do that. So, coils work. We're glad about that. The fuel pump is coming on, so we're good there. So, now I'm going to check this petcock before I move up to this carburetor and uh, go that whole nine yards. And then the uh, synchronizing cable, obviously, is doing good. So that's the sink cable right there, and that uh, transition to that side, I didn't tamper with it, tinker, I just cleaned all this, took all these screws off, cleaned any of the vacuum components, all the holes and major little spots and everything. So this, uh, once we fire this back up, the sucker should run like a top, I'm hoping, as long as there's no vacuum leaks anywhere, it should run pretty darn good. And uh, then we'll have to start addressing that tank over there, so... Let me finish down here and then we'll start on that carb. This is a big job. That's why most people don't like to buy bikes that have been sitting. And uh, please, 
run ethanol free in your motorcycles. Um, I think I'm going to stop the video here just because you guys kind of see what I'm doing and it seems pointless to, you know, do the whole video of taking that one apart. It's, I'm sure it's going to be identical to this one and how it looks and everything. So tomorrow will be the first fire up after we clean the carbs and see how things go. We'll hook it back up to the truck and then we'll give her the beans and uh, see if this thing finally wants to come into its idle. That would be that would be a huge improvement as, uh, on top of what I got going on right now. So let's hope that carb's just as easy to pop out of there and work on, and um, we'll go from there. So cheers. This is what it takes to fix old school motorcycles like this, man. Patience. You gotta have patience. So I'm either gonna stop working right now and do the rest of this tomorrow because I'm feeling a little meh, and health conditions kind of getting the best of me at this point. I've been at this all day, or you know, just like that bike had four carburetors. Imagine how long it took me to do my Kawasaki over there, my Ninja. You know, that one had four carbs, this one only has two, but the wiring is all in the way and all the lines because it's a V-twin. You know, it's a pain in the ass to work on this thing, so. Anyways, this is how you do it without actually removing the carbs completely from the bike, and this is the easiest way to clean carbs on a motorcycle. Most people get way too ahead of themselves, and they pull the carbs, and they go, oh, shit, I disconnected the synchronizing cable. Oh, now I'm fucked. Yeah, you are fucked, because now you have to take it to a shop, and it costs a fortune to have your carbs resynchronized. So don't tamper with things you don't need to. You can clean the carbs inside the bike. You just have to leave all the wires attached and just be gentle while you're turning and twisting things and doing it, you know. Do it correctly, you won't have any problems. So let me finish down here. I want to check which, uh, I, want to, I want to see what's going on with this petcock. I want to know why this says on when it says off. That doesn't make any, somebody actually wrote on on there. That's <laughs> off. I don't understand what this is going on here. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to, Turn the petcock on when it's disconnected from the main fuel line and see if uh, fuel comes out. You know, that's I, I need to know. I need to know what's going on with this petcock so I know what actually is on and what actually is off. This is kind of stupid how they have this set up. It really doesn't make any sense. So, all right, guys. Hopefully tomorrow we have a good running motorcycle and then the rest of it's easy. It's just taking care of the clutch master cylinder and, you know, hopefully the clutch is in good shape. The shifter is feels really solid everything in here going on feels good i don't feel slop or play like i said the bike only has eleven thousand miles so this feels real good there's second gear neutral first gear everything feels really smooth inside there so i'm, I'm hoping that everything goes good that'll be nice all right guys toodles